The wetlands of Botswana's Okavango Delta might seem a world away from the deserts of Helmand, but it's proved an ideal training ground for a group of territorial army soldiers. The military stabilisation support group, the MSSG's reserve element, has just returned from a two-week deployment to the Southern African Republic, where they've been using skills made increasingly important by the Defence Review. Our reporter, Charlotte Cross, herself a TA soldier, joined one of the teams operating in the remote region of Goumare and sent us this special report. Botswana's Okavango Delta. The world's largest inland delta where the Okavango River meets the Kalahari Desert. Seasonal flooding as water rushes down from Angola to the north creates one of Africa's richest concentrations of wildlife. But it also routinely forces people to leave their homes. On the edge of the delta is the remote town of Gumare. A small team from the MSSG has deployed here, living in a Botswana Defence Force camp. They're part of a 35-strong force invited by the country's president to stress test the National Disaster Management Plan, assessing whether it could be implemented right down at village level. Well, what we're doing here is a pretty typical job um, that the MSSG would do in an operational theatre, um, but it's allowing them to do it in a benign environment where they can train their skills uh, for the operational environment. So skills such as civil military cooperation, use of interpreters, cultural skills, language skills and so on. The job starts with visits to local officials, including the Department for Tribal Affairs and the local chief of police. Talking to them helps the team build a picture of how prepared the local government is to deal with an unexpected disaster like major flooding. Specialists in the team make more detailed assessments about local infrastructure. A doctor is well qualified to inspect Gumare's hospital. 64,000 people across the whole district rely on this facility for their medical care. They apparently don't always have clean water in times of flood and throughout the year. And power, as for much of the Delta region, is intermittent, although they do have a backup generator which kicks in when they need it to. So yeah, it does just about what it needs to and seems to scrape by. The team includes a civilian from the stabilisation unit, replicating the kind of working relationships found on operations. It's essential that the people within the SU are clearly aware of how the military operate and also how the military are clearly aware of how the SU operate and so it, it becomes a sieve mill process rather than two completely different processes um, working um, separately. There's also an engineer water specialist. The Department for Water Affairs collects data from the Okavango River and his expert knowledge helps assess how this information is managed and distributed. At the top of the delta, each morning the flow of water is being measured using a simple gauge. And that then gives them the information they need to then put plans into place to be able to go out and um, work with the local communities to be able to give them warning, to let them know that floods are coming. So this information is absolutely key in being able to manage the, uh, the, the river, the Okavango River and the flows into the delta. The team travels into remote villages to speak to the people most affected by the flooding. Deeper into the delta, where lush plains dominate the landscape, evidence of the flooding is widespread, with bridges and roads literally washed away. Although it's difficult to imagine in the heat of the dry season, once the rains come and the waters rise, villages like this one will quickly flood, and that will cut off whole areas for months on end, making it difficult for people to access vital services like hospitals and clean drinking water. The team meet the head man to find out how bad the flooding is and whether the government's anti-disaster measures are in place and effective at the lowest level. In the old days we used to live with water. Water was never a problem to us. But the volume of water coming here has changed. Last year and this year is not the same. And we don't know and we can't anticipate how much water will come next year. On the road into the worst affected village, a new culvert is under construction in an attempt to keep the road open once the rains come. Local people built this footbridge, but it was no match for the torrent of water which sweeps through here every year. 
This is by no means just an exercise. By the end of the fortnight, all the information is assembled into a report, presented to the Botswana National Disaster Management Office with recommendations for improvements. For the soldiers, the conditions, the work and the environment are also realistic preparation for future operational deployments. Gamari has been quite challenging in a number of reasons. We're having to live in quite austere conditions, limited power, limited facilities all around, uh, and that replicates very much the, st uh, the situation that most people find themselves on operations, particularly in Afghanistan. It's about taking the team out, out of their comfort zone and put them in an environment which will be very similar, similar as we can get it to an operational environment without actually the, the kinetic activity happening um, at the same time. Following the SDSR, the focus is shifting towards stabilising failing states and conflict prevention, rather than on operations and war fighting. The skills practised on Exercise Civil Bridge are set to become more vital than ever. Charlotte Cross, Forces News, Botswana.